what's going on this is Matt again and this is user defined function 7.1 so this is simply a fix on user defined se function 7 which was the split up function in which we take a string and convert it into an array so the thing I wanted to add was an optional argument for my sep rather than making it a forced argument I want to make it optional and that way I can split up each string by the character rather than using just a marker. So I'm going to show you how, how we do that. It should be a really quick video. It's only going to be a few fixes on the older code. It should work like this. So if I use split up, control shift A to get my arguments, and I highlight this cell, and I go ahead and delete all these guys, highlight that, and press F9, or go to my calculate now it will actually split up the string by every character within that string. So that actually has a few uses and I, I kind of realized that the next day, which is why I'm making this video. I thought, hey, what the hell? No harm in fixing an old function that I wrote. So, Okay, so this is the code I recorded before. If you recall, this was the split up function kind of a long function. We're going to actually add a little bit more to it. The first thing I wanted to fix from the last one is get rid of this j equals 1. It doesn't hurt anything, but we actually don't need it. So uh, as soon as this for loop is executed, j will be reset to 1. So we actually don't have to assign 1 to j right there. The second thing I wanted to do is actually change the arguments up here. So because we don't need my separator to be an argument, I'm just going to write optional in there, and then I'm going to set the default by going equal to null. So that changes quite a bit. That automatically says, okay, so if I only have one argument in this function, we're automatically going to assume that my separator is set to double quote. And I'll show you what we do with that. So for instance, uh, the first thing I need to do is adjust my cases for when my separator is null. And I'm going to do that by saying if my sep is equal to double quote, then x is going to be equal to the length of my string. So x is a variable that we're going to use to create the bounds of the new array. Otherwise, I'm going to have x equal one of these functions. So I'm actually just going to delete one of these guys and I'll say end if, like so. So in the case that my separator is null, the code will hit this line. It'll figure out that this evaluates to true and then set x equal to the length of my string, which is what we're going to need because we're going to redefine the upper bound of our new array with x. And if we're splitting up an array by the characters, we're going to have to account for all of the characters. So each character will get a new slot in that array. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is adjust this decision construct, which says basically if we can't find any more of my separator arguments into my string arguments, then new array is going to be set to my string and go ahead and exit this for loop. So this if statement actually exits the function. So I'm actually going to set another part of this and say ampersand my sep does not equal null. And this way this will never evaluate to true in the case in which the default is null. Okay, so the next step is to write the code that assigns values into the new array in the case in which our default is a null. So I'm going to do that by saying if my sep equals null, then new array at index of i minus 1, and we always subtract 1 because arrays start at index 0, is equal to the left of my string at point 1. Basically what that's saying is just take the first character of my string and attach it to the array. Then what we're going to do is adjust my string to reduce itself by saying my string equals mid my string at point 2 and the length would be my string. And the last thing we need to do is once this evaluates to true we need to have it exit the for loop. And I'm actually not going to put my end if right here because I don't want it to run through this and then run through this even though it wouldn't hypothetically. Um, because if it hits this exit 4, it'll jump out and go back. But I'm just going to throw an else statement here and then throw another end if here. And I'll indent this to make it further out and indent this. Okay, so that should be pretty much it. So I'm going to check my code and see if it works by going equals split up, take this guy, 
close quotes, wrap around it, and go to my calculate now, and it seems to work. So I guess the next thing would be to figure out whether the old arguments still work. So I would say comma space here, and then I don't need my transpose argument. And I'm going to hit calculate now, and that seems to work as well. Okay, so that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Again, if you have questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks again.